So a few weeks ago, in the early days of the PTU, we made a video about taking down Nagus Idris, the largest ship you can consistently get to spawn in SC right now. And using the new salvage mechanics to scrape that hole for all the additional credits that we could. Not gonna lie, but one of my personal top moments was that we seemingly even got onto Mr. Pappy's radar with this and the subsequent theory craft. I think they're, you know, excited about it as well and, and seeing um, the reaction that players are getting and then also uh, seeing, you know, some of the tactics that they're building, you know, like if they want to go take out an Idris, you know, what kind of ships do they need and then how much can, you know, then, you know, how many vultures do they need versus how many reclaimers do they need and, and the, the thought process behind, you know, all right, how, how am I going to earn as much money per hour, you know, by doing this. Um, and then some of the multi-crew gameplay that's that's also been coming out of that, whether it be the, the turrets or in the back and how they operate, what, you know, pulling out the cargo boxes and everything. But since hitting open PTU, we've been able to get far more people involved into our salvage operations. And we've put that theory crafting to the real test. So I wanted to follow up with some of the findings from this experimentation. If this all sounds good to you, then grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro, and then let's get into it. Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today we're going to look at scaled up industrial salvage ops in 318. We've tried out multiple different sources of salvage and it would seem that the most consistent meaty prize is indeed as we suspected, hunting Idris capital ships using the critical threat combat beacons. I'm going to break down the operation that we planned and bring out a few talking points in this video about what worked, what didn't, and what we might change as we continue to iterate on this op as 318 goes live. I'd like to start by saying a huge thank you to everyone over at the Frontier community who got involved. We went through the ups and downs of PTUs together, with some things going our way, but some days turning decidedly against us with bugs and 30k's galore. So thanks to everyone who took all that with good humour and didn't let it get them down. If you would like to get involved with some multi-crew action like this, then please come on over to the Frontier community Discord, the link's just in the video description below. And remember that part of what makes ops like this great is that you don't need a massive ship or a huge fleet to take part. A lot of what we're doing is just getting people into crews with others. So if this vid sparks your interest in SE and you want to run out and get yourself an account, you really only need that $45 starter pack. Just make sure to use a referral code, mine's the one up on screen, but if you've got any friends who play already, just use theirs. I'm afraid to say I've been a little bit under the weather recently, and while I'm decidedly on the mend, my voice hasn't quite got the message yet, so apologies in advance for any cracks or scratchiness, but without further ado, let's get into it. This operation can be split into its three elements or wings, combat, industrial, and logistics and support. I'm going to go through each one's role in the op and focus on some of the lessons we learned in each area just to give it some structure. But the special source of an op like this is really trying to balance all of the elements, so we'll summarise at the end with some of the key balance changes and improvements we'd look to make as we continue to iterate. So the combat wing are responsible for taking down the crit threat beacons, each of which consist of an Idris and usually a couple of hammerheads as escort. These missions pop up in your service beacons tab and are paying between 300 to 400k. As you'll see later on, the salvage is the higher element of the payout in the op, and whether or not you complete the beacon successfully or not, you'll still be able to salvage the Idris. However, completing the missions consistently is going to generate some reasonable bonus cash, and it's going to avoid you having to regrind the rep if you lose any due to failures. So with that in mind, I didn't want to assign too little weight to our combat team. We experimented rather a lot with different setups and loadouts, ultimately finding favour with those ships capable of mounting size 5s. And this will help you maintain a range advantage over the hammerheads and the majority of the Idris's weaponry, allowing you to still dish out your DPS without taking too much in return. This just maintains the sustain of the op, and for similar reasons we favoured laser weaponry, primarily laser cannons because of their higher DPS rate than laser repeaters, just to cut down on the amount we had to go back and reload. 
Personally, I'm a big fan of the Aegis Redeemer with its two dual size 5 turrets. This will give you four cannons like the Omnisky 15s or M7As. And you've then got two size 4s and two size 3s under pilot control. It can also take a bit of a beating with its two size 3 shields and has a surprisingly small profile for dodging that railgun shot from the Idris. Keeping most of the DPS in the hands of turret operators also helps the pilot remain evasive while the pew pews stay on target. The likes of the Drake Corsair and the RSI Connie are also worth a look. The Corsair might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it has some of the weightiest pilot controlled DPS with 4 size 5 and 2 size 4 hardpoints. And with the Connie you get 2 size 5s alongside that pair of 2 size 4s. If you're looking to save on crew then gravitating towards ships like these can help, but one of my big reasons to prefer the Redeemer is that we can give seats to more people and get them involved in a crew. Another element which definitely deserves consideration is incorporating bombers like the Eclipse with its 3 size 9 torps or the Retaliator with its 6 size 9s. In some of our earlier tests we were using these particularly to quickly knock out the adds like the Hammerheads, but we found that the point defence systems on both the Hammerheads and the Idris are working much more as intended in the 318 build, and a lot of our torpedoes were getting shot down before hitting the target. For that reason we felt it was best to stick with the sustained laser weaponry in this op. You can split this particular egg however you like as long as you find that level at which you clear the beacons in a timely fashion, and ideally retain the payouts in the majority of cases. For our fleet we assign 10 members to combat, using 3 redeemers with 3 crew each. There's no point adding the 4th person on the redeemers since they control a rear facing turret which only has 2 size 3s. And we also added a corsair for the extra oomph. The salvage wing is where we spent the majority of our resources, bringing in a total of 6 reclaimers, each with a skinny crew of 4, giving a total of 24 people in this area. Reclaimers are just about feasible with 3 if you put someone in the processing deck to move the boxes around, and then have one of your two turret operators, who sit in seats on the flight deck, pop out of the turret if the ship needs repositioning. However, having a fourth crewmate allowing you to keep the pilot seat occupied during the op, it's a lot more efficient since you can always make sure the lasers are optimally positioned, without shutting one of them down each time you need to move. It also makes things a lot safer. If you were to get ambushed at any stage, you wouldn't have to have someone clamber out of a turret seat and get to the controls. You can just warp out or at least begin taking evasive action. If you do have a fifth person, you can always double up down in the processing deck, which can make things like shifting boxes to cargo easier. But with a bit of practice one crew member can handle the flow coming out of both terminals. And if you can keep these crews skinny, you can get more reclaimers into your industrial wing, and the reclaimers are where the real money's made. After some experimentation and trying some variations, we found it most comfortable to split the reclaimers into three squadrons of two ships each. Ahead of the main op we ran a test where we took one Idris down and we crewed up five reclaimers, which we've shuffled into place around the husk. We then coordinated our start and salvaged for 30 minutes. What we found was that two of the reclaimers had the best positioning, making 140 and 124 SCU of RMC in the time. Two others did okay, but not quite as well, getting 94 and 86, while the fifth reclaimer effectively became the runt of the litter. Unable to manoeuvre into a position where the rates were better, it netted just 43 SCU. So our combat wing would constantly take down Idris's through the crit threat beacons, and the three reclaimer squadrons could bunny hop. With the firepower we had in our combat wing, they were capable of making a wreck once every 10 to 15 minutes, meaning that each reclaimer squadron would have between 30 to 45 minutes on their wreck before the churn meant a fresh one would be available for them to move on to. This felt pretty good since in our other tests we'd found out that while there's still plentiful salvage to get through, the rates start to slow after the first half hour, as you've exhausted the low hanging fruit. It's better to move on at this point to a new wreck site if it's available to maintain a higher average extraction rate, than to sit on the same carcass trying to squeeze every credit value out of it. Speaking of average extraction rates, let's briefly talk modules for those salvage lasers. In my last video I highlighted how the theoretically fastest module should be the abrade, if you take the statistics provided, the combination of surface area, speed and efficiency should give the abrade the edge in terms of the weighted average of extraction rate. But in practice, trawlers were getting consistently higher rates than abrades. 
So for a little while, I started to think that maybe CIG had made a typo. And where they'd specified the diameter of the module's salvaging area, they could have actually meant radius, which would have explained the trawler's higher extraction rate. After checking on some unspoiled hull pieces, the sizes appeared right in relation to one another. So what I think is happening instead is that the Idris hulls specifically have multiple overlapping parts of armour plates, and the trawler's larger size is letting you hit more of these at once, resulting in this higher extraction rate. You're technically giving up efficiency versus the abrade, but efficiency only really matters if you're going to salvage 100% of a hull piece, since it's effectively a measure of how much of the available material you convert into boxes of RMC in your cargo hold. But as mentioned before, we're after maintaining the highest possible rate of extraction for the time that we're on any one particular wreck, since a new one will be available to the crew before they've exhausted the available material. So one lengthy explanation later, use trawlers if you're recreating this up. And just before we move on from the salvage wing, and maybe to presage a few comments, why no vultures, why only reclaimers? And I say this with a strong and only growing fondness for the plucky little vulture, the Reclaimer's just better, and I'm very very glad that it is because CIG have, between these two ships at least, really got the balance of solo versus a large multi-crew ship just right. The Reclaimer's size 2 lasers apply the same modules as the Vulture's size 1s. You can choose to equip cinches, abrades or trawlers, and they all have the same diameter start giving identical surface area. However, Reclaimer lasers have 3 times the speed stat of the Vulture and 15% higher efficiency. So each reclaimer is roughly three and a bit vultures from a pure production standpoint. Then throw into the mix that the time that you save by having a dedicated cargo operator in the reclaimer, and by having two processing units capable of churning out a box each at the time. And this all saves you a lot of time in generating boxes and getting them into position. You could get around this by adding a second person in the back of the vulture, then you'd only get two vultures to one fully manned reclaimer in terms of crew utilisation, and you'd fall behind due to the reclaimer's greater speed. Then there's the cargo capacity with the vulture only having grid space for 12 SCU, with capacity for 20 or so boxes at an absolute push, while the reclaimer can store hundreds. There's more, but I don't think I need to belabor this point any further. If you've got them, reclaimers are going to deliver the best results of this. But if you're short on reclaimers and have vultures handy, then it's not like they're going to hurt. Right now, scale-wise, we found it best to roll logistics and support elements into a single wing. In our org, these are usually two separate divisions, but this was kind of a two birds, one stone situation. The main aim from a logistics perspective was to try and shift boxes out of the reclaimers and into a cargo ship at intervals, allowing the reclaimers to keep salvaging while a higher capacity cargo ship could make the runs to market to sell more efficiently. The reclaimer crews are purposely skinny at four, so you've got a solo operator working the cargo. And while this is sufficient to keep up with the boxes as they're spewing out the processing units, this one person isn't going to have time to reorient boxes between decks. So we're going to deliver extra help as and when it's time to think about unloading, in effect when the cargo grids on the upper salvage deck are getting full. And with a bit of coordination between the pilot of the reclaimer, it's possible using a tractor beam to launch yourself directly into the lower salvage deck through the rear hatch or the butt flap as we're colloquially calling it. If we get an extra two Logi crew on board the Reclaimer, one of them can head up to the upper salvage deck while one stays down on the lower. And while the Reclaimer crew carry on salvaging, the logistics crew can organise shuffling the RMC down to the lower deck ready to offload. Once the boxes are in position, we can pull the cargo ship into position for the offloading. And we experimented with a couple of options for cargo ship here. The Caterpillar can be incredibly useful, as it's able to pull in extremely close to the rear hatch. The C2 Hercules has the advantage in terms of cargo capacity at 696 SEU versus 576, and if positioned right you can offload two reclaimers simultaneously. In our setup I'd take a Drake Cutlass Red with a pilot and four crew to drop off on board the reclaimers, and a C2 with a pilot and one crew, giving a total of seven crew in the wing. This setup means the Logi crew can unload an entire salvage squadron at once. And by using a Cutlass Red as the drop-off ship, you also have the medical base covered, meaning that if anybody aboard the Reclaimers has suffered any injuries as a result of errant boxes, they can always get fixed up. During the op, we attempted to offload the Reclaimers in situ at the wreck sites to save time, 
but we're probably going to instead move the group out into dead space outside the planetary boundary. There seem to be random and spawns of NPC pirates when you're within planetary systems with any form of cargo, so the reclaimers act as something of a magnet for these. They're not generally too concerning given the shields of everything involved, but they can be an unnecessary annoyance when you're trying to offload. So when it comes to the take and analysing how profitable the op was, we had a total crew on the day of 41 people, and after a total of 3 hours we'd taken down 9 Idrises and salvaged just shy of 1800 SCU of RMC. The payout from the critical beacons was worth approximately 3 million credits, while the RMC would have sold for about 13.5 million, giving a total of 16.5 million credits. Split evenly amongst the 41 crew, each member would have taken home about 400k. Not too shabby, but realistically we could have improved on this with more practice and a few tweaks. So one of the biggest time sinks was getting everything set up. Getting reclaimers crewed and off planet is not the quickest of endeavours, and you're limited to just four spawning locations. We based this up out of Microtech, and we got ourselves in a bit of a traffic jam since there were only so many available hangars of the size to take a reclaimer. What I would love to see is bedlogging working consistently so I could get the reclaimer captains to bedlog somewhere in space ahead of the op start, and we could then just ferry their crews to them using small ships like Pisces and EVA them over. This would just save an awful lot of time. Alternatively, as long as the reclaimers were packing TS2 QT drives, we could start some of them from other major LZs like Lawville and then make the hop across to Microtech. We also had some fun and games with a couple of ships that were pulled for people who didn't own them, so as an org I would look to pull funds and make sure that the right people had the right ships as opposed to having to ask others to pull them out for them. Better yet would be some form of org tools that allowed us to share ships, but we'll probably be waiting on that one for a while. All in all, from launch to the first beacon took about the first hour, so if we can cut that time down we could definitely improve our rates of return. And similarly, if we'd kept the op running longer than the three hours that we ran it for, then every additional hour that we ran it for would have been more profitable, since we wouldn't have to do that start up again. We also lost some time when Reclaimer Squadrons were initially surprised by the random spawns of hostile NPCs. I for one had no idea that that happened. And as is generally good practice in an industrial ship, a number of pilots reacted to protect their cargo by warping away as soon as the red chevrons appeared on the radar. In the future I'd consider adding a small group of fighters to act as a quick response force just to take out these guys, and additionally provide a bit more escort to the cargo ships with more PvP oriented weaponry. Realistically with their three large shields the reclaimers don't have to worry all that much about these ships as long as they're not left to be incessantly harassed. Also, it's questionable how much value unloading the reclaimers into cargo ships added in this instance. With practice, we reckon we can pit two reclaimers in about 25 to 30 minutes, but that would involve taking them out of rotation completely for that time that they're offloaded. If you were looking to maximise sheer profit, you could ditch try and do this and instead load the reclaimers up to the gunnels, maybe adding a fifth crew member to each so that you had two in the salvage decks and could handle shuffling those boxes down to the cargo hold. You could then take the short hop back to the Major LZ and sell directly. And realistically you could accomplish this in a similar amount of time to unloading them and save yourselves the crew. However, I think it's an important talking point for why you might run ops like this with things which aren't 100% efficient. To me, one of the biggest incentives for organisations to run ops at any scale is to learn to work together. Right now in Stanton doing an op like this, a Major LZ and a TDD is never far away. But in the future we're going to find ourselves in situations where transferring cargo to more suitable ships in this way is going to be essential. I'd rather be practicing the mechanics of this now than have to learn it then. Similarly in future iterations I'd like to add a staff error and crew to the Lodge and support wing to offer refueling to the other ships so that we can practice this element. It was on our cards for the original lot but on the day in the PTU the staff error pilot seat was busy just being a death trap and killing the pilot repeatedly. Theoretically being able to keep all of your ships topped up with fuel and concentrating the cargo into the smaller number of dedicated haulers should also help to reduce the profile of your op. Pirates will undoubtedly be using scouts in 318 to be on the lookout for industrialists in action. If you can limit the amount of large ships like reclaimers coming and going from major LZs, 
And if you can keep refueling to deep space as opposed to a high traffic area like a low orbital space station, then you've got a much better chance of flying beneath the radar with even a large operation. So I hope you enjoyed this dive into the mechanics of a somewhat larger multidisciplinary op. Overall, I was really happy with how it went. It's always awesome to see something you've spent time theory crafting go from the drawing board to reality in game. And I think in 318 we're starting to see a new level of the potential of SC coming online, with new mechanics such as the cargo refactor and salvaging providing the first real opportunity for different types of players to work together like this. We're going to keep iterating on this op and others using the new mechanics in 318 as it goes live, so please do pop into the Discord if you'd like to try it out. We run a lot of this stuff at a community level, so there's no need to join our official organisation to get involved. If you think I've earned it, then please consider donating a like and hitting subscribe. And if you think they'd get something out of it, feel free to share it with your friends and orgmates. It does really help me out. If you are keen to help support my burrito habit, I do also have a Patreon. The link's in the video description. But just by watching all the way to the end, you're already doing more than enough. And with all that said, I think I'm going to give my voice a break. But thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.